A declonius named Lucy escapes from an experimental laboratory off the coast of Kamakura. The lab serves as a holding facility, declonius, and uses them for experiments. After killing many guards, Lucy is shot in the head and falls into the sea. Her brain damage causes her to form an innocent, somewhat infantile split personality, New. Later, she's found by cousins Kota and Yuka, who have reunited after eight years to study at university. They take her home with them. Lucy breaks Kota's seashell, a keepsake from his younger sister, Kane, who died of an illness eight years earlier. Kota gets angry and Lucy runs away. Lucy remembers none of her past. The offshore facility headed by the scientist Kurama sends a task force led by the ruthless, cold-hearted assassin Bando to hunt down Lucy. They encounter her in her innocent new state at a beach in Kamakura. She is hit over the head by Bando. Bando then tells his partner to finish off New, but the hit reverts New back to Lucy, who kills Bando's partner and goes after Bando. Lucy shoots Bando and also dismembers and blinds him, but before killing him, she reverts to New. So we learn that the personalities of Lucy and New switch between each other depending on events. After being injured by Bando, Kota is placed in a hospital but is not severely injured and is released hours later, while Yuka looks for Lucy. He encounters Lucy back at their house and forgives her. Since Lucy is only non-sterile Diclonius, the staff at the facility will help Bando only if he agrees to be castrated as Lucy wishes to create a world populated only by Diclonius and can infect anyone who has been touched by her vectors. Any children Bando would have would be Diclonius. Yuga has been in love with Kota since childhood. She's caught him in several awkward situations with New, such as changing her wet clothes and is increasingly jealous of his interest in New. Mayu, a 13-year-old girl and her dog Wanta, who witnessed the incidents in episode 2, return an umbrella which Kota left on the beach. She is interrogated about the events. Nana is another Diclonius, codenamed number 7. She calls Kurama Papa. She is released to track down Lucy and bring her back to the facility. Nana uses the telepathic powers of Diclonius to find Lucy. She fights her in a local cemetery. Mayu encounters them during the battle. Before long, Nana has all her limbs ripped off and is nearly dead, but she has damaged Lucy's ability to control vectors, temporarily sealing them. Kurama, much to his frustration, is ordered by his boss, Kakuzawa, to put Nana down as she's no longer useful. Yuka discovers that Mayu is homeless and invites her to stay at the house. After spending the night at the house, Mayu leaves. Mayu's past is revealed. Mayu's mother remarried, as her stepfather repeatedly molested her. Mayu's mother was jealous that her husband paid more attention to Mayu than to her mother. When Mayu's mother refused to help, Mayu ran away from home and encountered a stray dog, whom she named Wanta. In present day, Kota and Yuka convinced Mayu to come live with them. Mayu's mother happily gives Kota guardianship of Mayu. Kota and Yuka return to their university classes, accompanied by Nyu. Professor Kakuzawa, the son of Kurama's boss, and by coincidence a university lecture, discovers New, claiming that Lucy is his brother's daughter. He takes custody of her away from Kota and Yuka. Kakuzawa is revealed to be partly Diclonius. He intends to breed with Lucy to end the reign of Homo sapiens. However, she decapitates him, claiming that he is worthless in the evolution towards the Diclonius populated world. Her vectors have returned. Bando escapes from the hospital before being castrated. He seeks to take his revenge on Lucy. Professor Kakuzawa, used decapitated body is found by assistant and by Kota. On her way to school, Mayu sees Bando and is relieved that he is all right because she placed a tourniquet on his arm when he was injured. He gives her his phone number so that she can call him if she's in a pinch. This relieves the depth which he feels towards her. When he asks if she has seen a woman with horns, Mayu asks if he means new. He brutally interrogates her and she returns the phone number saying she's in a pinch. He drops her, walks away and says he never wants to see her again. Mayu doesn't understand why New is targeted. While searching for Lucy, Kota and Yuka develop a fondness for each other and they kiss. Finally, Kota and Yuka find Lucy and take her home. Lucy recalls memories of knowing Kota and Yuka when they were all children. Kurama, despite his orders to kill Nana, gives her new artificial limbs and money and releases her. However, Nana comes across Bando, who sees her horns and assumes that she is Lucy. Bando attacks Nana with heavy tungsten bullets, unlike normal lighter bullets. These can't be deflected with vectors and she's wounded. Nana says that she wants to be good as her father advised her and not to fight. He responds that she will be unwelcome everywhere because of her horns. As humans born with horns, the results of a virus are killed at birth. Nana and others were spared for research. She remembers that Kurama was ordered to kill her and wonders why she was born. Using her longer vector, she pins Bando down, but is dealt a glancing blow by a bullet. 
The gun's recoil breaks Bondo's prosthetic arm. Because she is bleeding, Nana cries for Papa. Bondo and Nana realize that Lucy has injured them both, and they team up. Kakuzawa reprimands Kurama. Shirakawa, Kurama's second-in-command, and Shirakawa's assistant for letting Nana escape and for failing to find Lucy. Meanwhile, Nana, ignorant of the world outside the facility, doesn't know what to do with the money she was given, and burns some of it. She encounters Mayu at the cemetery at which she almost died, and they become friends. Nana is brought back to Kota's home, discovering Lucy actually new in the home. Nana attacks her. Nana's blow knocks New unconscious and she runs away after everyone blames her for hunting and hurting New. As a result of living her life inside the facility, Nana is naive and sensitive about the events surrounding her. Nana tells Mayu that New is really Lucy and what she is like, also explaining what Diclonius and their powers are. Professor Kakuzawa's assistant is brought before the chairman and forced to cooperate with the facility in place of her boss. The chairman tells Kurama he doesn't want a vaccine for the virus, but the virus. With Lucy, he wants to build a new mankind since Homo sapiens are fading. Number 35 is arranged to kill number 7 and retrieve Lucy by the chairman over Kurama's frustration. As Lucy is recovering from being hit by Nana, she goes through a flashback of her childhood, where she was raised in an orphanage all her life, where her peers constantly bullied her. Even the staff called her creepy and did nothing to stop the bullying. Feeling lonely and ignored, she begins to develop her hatred for humans. When her peers discover that she has made friends with a stray dog, discovered when a girl pretended to be Lucy's friend, they force her to watch as they beat it to death with a vase. In her despair, rage, and bloodlust, Lucy activates her vectors and kills her schoolmates and blows up the entire blood-soaked orphanage, her first murders. Lucy's past links with Kota are uncovered. After her dog was killed, she began to show contempt for humans until Kota's briefly befriended her. Kota plays the series opening theme Lilium in a music box which he bought in Kamakura. They go to the zoo and later play in the water, where she thanks Kota for the most fun she'd ever had in her life. Her hope in being reacquainted with humans is briefly regained and she starts to like Kota. However, when she discovers Kota's cousin Yuka, who is claimed to be a boy, is actually a girl, she loses hope, thinking he already has someone he liked and wondering why he lied to her. She begins her future murderous path. Kurama's past is explained in this episode. He was a good friend of Professor Kazukawa, who invited Kurama to work with him and his father on the Diclonius project after leaving university. He reluctantly agrees. However, as he is performing research, he is infected with the Diclonius virus via transmission through their vectors. And as a result, his daughter Mariko is born a Diclonius. He decides to kill her. However, as his wife dies from complications after giving birth, begging him to spare her. So, Kurama chooses to let her live. Lucy is revealed to be the original Diclonius, the queen, who infected other humans with her vectors and began the outbreak, which is why all the new cases are happening in the same area. Meanwhile, as both Lucy and Nana are now part of Kota's household, the facility decides to send the most powerful Diclonius, known only as Number 35. Mariko is revealed to be the identity of Number 35, a monstrous Diclonius. She instinctively kills any human she sees. She has 26 vectors and a range of 11 meters. Lucy has four vectors and a range of two meters. Under supervision from staff at the facility, she is released as a last effort to retrieve Lucy. Once free, she begins to slaughter the staff, but stops when a bomb in her arm is detonated. Since other bombs remain in parts of her body, Kazukawa's condition to letting Kurama's daughter stay alive, she is forced to agree to work with the staff. Nana senses Mariko's presence and her desire to kill her through their ability to locate each other. Mariko and Nana meet on a bridge on the shore and battle. Kurama, who supposedly had to leave, has joined Bando to kill Lucy without the knowledge of Shirakawa and the staff. The past which Kota had tried to forget eight years ago comes back to him as he remembers Lucy took revenge on Kota's lie about the gender of his cousin by killing Kota's father and his sister Kane. As Shirakawa dispatches Mariko to kill Lucy, Bando is paid by Kurama to kill her as well. Mariko is about to kill Nana as well as Kota and Lucy until Nana uses her vectors to deactivate Mariko's and falls off the bridge. As Mariko's vectors fail and she is taken away, Shirakawa discovers Lucy's new personality and identifies her as the target Diclonius, only to be killed by Lucy along with the security forces enlisted to guard against Mariko. Bando arrives to kill Mariko, only to see Lucy and go after her instead. Mariko regains the ability to use her vectors and stages one final meeting with Lucy. They meet and Lucy goes into a state of shock after losing one of her horns. Kurama, accompanied by Nana, whom he rescued after she fell off the bridge, where she battled Mariko, encounters their fight. 
Here, Mariko realizes that Kurama is her father and meets him for the first time. Beginning to cry after finally encountering her father, who appears to have abandoned her for Nana, Kurama exchanges final words of reassurance to Mariko just before the bomb inside her chest is detonated, killing them both. The director of the facility that had been holding Lucy, Nana, and Mariko reveals he is a Diclonius. Lucy, who makes it out of the fight alive, reveals her remorse and emotion for Kota, and they kiss before she leaves to encounter the security team. However, Lucy's ultimate fate is unknown except that her other horn is broken, although it is possible that she is still alive or possibly dead, as the shots of the guns continue, even after her horn is broken. The family of Ka Dei, house, including Nana, settles down and they are about to eat. Wanta barks at something at the door. When Kota goes to check, the music box playing Lilium stops, and he sees a figure standing at the front door who might be Lucy. He then hears the grandfather clock, which Lucy had repeatedly attempted to repair, ticking again. Did you like this video? Let me know what you think down in the comments. Oh, and don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button while you're at it, and as always, I will see you in the next video.